So today we'll be doing a fun scene of a little bee with some flowers. So I already have my bee drawn on. So I kind of have a collection of references that I found. So there's some that are like a little bumblebee. Um, sometimes they're on a flower. Um, sometimes they're just surrounded by flowers. I thought the dog flower is really interesting. So I incorporated a lot of those in my picture. Um, and then what we're going to do next is go over it with ink. So one thing to think about when you're trying to create a composition is you want to try and have things in odd numbers. So I kind of have like a full flower, peak of a flower, and then just a little leaf over here. And that kind of gives my picture a nice good variety. You know, instead of having like a ton of flowers on one side, I kind of have it spread out. So what I want to start with next is just outlining everything on my picture and I want to really be careful because a lot of these lines I put here to indicate um, kind of some of the fuzziness of the bee I don't want to lose on the sides as well so I don't want to just keep that as a really hard line. So when you're outlining you really want to make sure that you have your reference in front of you because a lot of times we start just following the lines and thinking that we know which way they're supposed to go, but, you know, sometimes we don't. <laughs> so it's always good to have your reference with you so you kind of know what you're outlining. And then when I'm kind of outlining the wing, one thing I really want to think about is bee wings are actually transparent. So I want to make sure that I don't erase kind of the flower lines and I actually continue the wing on top of the flower and then I'm also going to include the flower as well. So they'll kind of be kind of meshed together and kind of layered over top of each other. So now that I've done the outlining on my B, what I'm going to do next is start on some of the shading. So when you're looking at the shading on the B itself, obviously bees have stripes. So you want to make sure that you have kind of an area that has lighter fur and then kind of an area with darker fur. And the way you can kind of create that illusion is having more pen in the blackish areas but you don't want it to be completely black because then you know obviously their fur isn't totally black they have some highlights or even a little bit of yellow sometimes showing through so you want to just have more lines going on in this area and then later on when we do the watercolor it'll separate it even more so i'm going to come in and start kind of curving and kind of flicking my lines So, because bees, you know, even though they're furry, they don't have like dog fur. So you want them to be kind of fluffy. And, you know, you have to think about what shape the body is and kind of what direction all the fur is going to go. So this is kind of my first layer. And then to kind of create the stripes, then I'll come in and darken kind of like a section on one part and there you go see now it already looks like a kind of a stripe so and then I would kind of continue it on this part of the body just flicking very very lightly and I'm kind of curving my pen a little bit more as I go off to the side and then I could kind of make it a little bit darker right here to start making those black lines And then the feet over here are probably going to be almost entirely black. They are a little furry on the edges, so you want to have some little flicks over there. And then also you don't want them to be, you know, really boring, so you want to have a little bit of light shining through, which you can make them really high contrast highlights and like fill in everything, you know, except for those little white spots, or you can kind of just have it blended a little bit into it. And then when I get to my leaves, one way you can kind of make the veins show up 
is you can just draw them in as kind of dark lines and then have just kind of lines to indicate that it's a leaf. Um, or you can even sometimes make implied lines for your veins by kind of darkening some lines around it. So then I have these little white veins. And for my flower to get a, bit, a sense of delicacy, you want to make sure you don't go too heavy um, with your ink. You know, I'm probably just, I didn't even go very heavy when I was outlining kind of the middle of it. And then kind of for the outside lines, I'm just doing just some kind of small hatching on the edges so the petal starts feeling really crinkled. And then you really want to make sure that you have a pretty nice shadow where it gets closer in to your flower because a lot of times the petals start curving and it starts to get a little darker in here so you want to make sure that gets darker and then for you know your wings you want to make sure that you don't really have a lot of shading going on on those since they're supposed to be transparent so I really just want to make sure I have them outlined and I could come in and kind of make some of those edge lines a little bit bolder but basically I don't want to go too crazy because um, we want them to feel transparent. So now that I have my bee a little bit shaded and outlined and I have one of my flowers shaded, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the watercolor. So, you know, you can always come back in, like after I have these painted, I can always come back in and add more ink. That's not a problem. So that's why it's good to kind of stop, put the watercolor, and then see how you like it. So I'm going to start first by just doing a really light layer of some cadmium yellow onto my little bee. So most of the yellow is going to go on the little white areas but there's actually a little hint of some yellow in some of the dark areas so I'm going to use a little bit of water to go kind of in between to kind of have a little hint of that yellow in there and the wings even have a little bit of yellow too but I'm going to wait until after I have um, my petals done and then come back in and do those so um, on my petals, these are called dog flowers, and they're fairly, you know, kind of a light pink. Sometimes have a little bit of a hint of purple. So I'm going to take some alizarin crimson, and I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it to make them a little bit purple. Maybe a little bit more of that alizarin crimson. And then what I'm going to do is just start at the very tips of my flowers. And then I'm going to take some water and just have them kind of fade into the water. Because they kind of get a little bit lighter as they go in. So and I don't want to do the petal that's right next to it. I want to actually skip around. So I'm going to do a little bit this petal. And then while those are drying, I'm going to go ahead and do a layer on some of my leaves with some sap green and a little bit of ultramarine blue again just because those petals are actually a little bit cooler than sap green. Sap green is kind of a warm green. So I'm going to be doing just dropping in some of that green and I'm also going to take a little bit of yellow To have kind of a hint of some highlights on the edges. Also gets good variety to your leaves because you don't want it to be perfectly flat. That makes them a little boring. And then I probably don't want to do that one because I'm just about to do it, but we'll do it anyway. We'll just see what happens. Because if you mess up, that's okay, because that's part of life. <laughs> so, and then 
I'm going to come back to some of these. They're not too close to the edge, so I think it'll be okay. These ones I want to be a little bit different than the others, so I've added a little bit of yellow to them. So I'll add a little bit more lizard cups in. And I'm just going to add some water. While that's still wet, because since I kept most of my red on the very edges and just added water over there, it'll be pretty safe to just drop in some yellow and I'll just let a little bit bleed out into my white. If it starts to bleed too much, that's where you can take a little bit of a wet brush and lift. Just have to be careful because if you lift too much, it'll just become white. I'm going to take some more of that green use a little bit less water and a little more paint. I could even add a little paint gray to it if I really, really dark. And I'm going to make it really, really dark right underneath that leaf. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadows to one side of my leaves. I'm just going to kind of wet the edges so that it's not just like a flat section. I'm going to kind of blend that color just with a little bit of water. I'll also make them dark right where they're right behind the flower. Also, whoopsies, <laughs> right behind that flower. And I'll just lift a little bit of that green off with my paintbrush. No worries. And then I'm going to come back in with my B, and I'm actually going to take a little bit more of that cadmium yellow. And Bs actually have a little bit of almost a gold tone to them, like in some of their shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit of a golder yellow and some of that cadmium yellow. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that yellow onto this wing. I'm just adding a little bit on the edges. I still want to keep it fairly white, but it's good to have a little bit of coloration to them. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I'm going to add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, which is a really nice dark brown. And that's going to give me kind of an interesting looking gray, which I'm going to use to kind of go over some of the dark area of the bee. So one thing you want to do is you don't want to do it really, really dark where you can't really see any of the lines you did. But you also don't want to do it so light that it looks gray. So you want to kind of have an in-between. It's good to kind of flick your paintbrush like that, leaving kind of some white spaces. And I'm also going to put a little bit on the head of the bee. I'm going to put some on its legs. Oops. I'm going to come back in with some darkish pink um, to kind of help to separate each of my petals as well as add a little bit more brightness on the edges because you don't want to have it too light. You know, you want your watercolors to be nice and colorful. And then the little pollen spots that are on this flower are actually a little bit orangey, so I'm going to add a little bit of orange and some of those. And there you go. That's kind of how to start it. Um, you could also come in and, you know, add more layers. 
you know, don't be afraid to let it dry and then come back to it or always back away from your artwork um, and look at it later. Because sometimes we might not like it in the moment, but as soon as we step away and come back, we tend to like it a little bit more.